I'm Ken Anderson, and I'd like to talk about new horizons in the treatment of relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma. Here are my disclosures. As you know, there have been incredible advances in multiple myeloma that we've heard about at this meeting, the proteasome inhibitors, the IMIDs, the HDAC inhibitor, monoclonal antibodies, a nuclear transport inhibitor, and most recently an immunotoxin. All of these drugs have moved from the advanced stage clinical trials into earlier stages of disease. And we have 28 FDA approved treatments as of now. And myeloma is a chronic illness in many patients. Nonetheless, about 30,000 patients die, uh, new cases occur every year. And about 13,000 deaths occur from myeloma, stressing the importance of ongoing research. Now you've heard already at this meeting about the therapy for newly diagnosed transplant candidates. It's usually triplet therapies with an IMID, a proteasome inhibitor and steroids. Now we're adding monoclonal antibodies. You've heard about the Griffin trial, adding daratumumab to RVD and achieving deep responses. I mention this because in spite of all of this progress, we still have relapsed myeloma that eventually multiply relapses and leads to a refractory state. When you and I see patients with relapsed refractory myeloma, we think of these features, the frailty status of the patients, the disease morbidity, the risk assessment, what it's the prior treatments for our patients, and what are the goals in terms of the patient preference and lifestyle. And here is an up-to-dated uh, list of the different therapies that are available to us now to treat relapsed and refractory myeloma. If patients have had lenalidomide and bortezomib uh, as part of their initial therapy, the options are listed here. Carfilzomib, the second generation proteasome inhibitor, the second generation imid pomalidomide or DEX, monoclonal antibodies such as daratumumab, elituzumab, or isotuximab can now be incorporated. There are also regimens listed here in patients whose myeloma is refractory to bortezomib or refractory to lenalidomide. And at the bottom, even in those patients whose myeloma is triple class or so called pentarefractory, that is refractory to lenalidomide, pomalidomide, bortezomib, carfilzomib, and daratumumab. We have selinexor and most recently belantamab, mafodotin. So here's an example in lenalidomide refractory myeloma. One of the most recent approvals is pomalidomide velcade dex, showing on the left a, a progression free survival advantage. Um, in uh, patients whose myeloma is lenalidomide refractory, and here on the right in lenalidomide refractory myeloma at the time of first relapse. Here's a slide that puts together all of the trials that used Velcade DEX as a control arm. So these are patients whose myeloma was in fact sensitive to Velcade but resistant to lenalidomide. And they're pomalidomide Velcade DEX, daratumumab Velcade DEX, Carfilzomib DEX, Selenex or Velcade DEX, and Venetoclax Velcade DEX. And in each case, you can see there's a PFS advantage and a hazard ratio in favor of the triplet. Although these studies show progression-free survival, overall survival is confounded by the subsequent therapies. And then here's the converse. What about patients whose myeloma is refractory to bortezomib? So here's an example of lenalidomide daratumumab dex that I show you primarily to remind you that the progression-free survival is remarkable and you can even get MRD negative um, status in relapsed refractory myeloma. And here's a similar slide for all of the clinical trials that have used lenalidomide dex as a control arm combining it with exazomib, with elituzumab, with carfilzomib or daratumumab, and in each case demonstrating a progression-free survival advantage and a hazard ratio in favor of the triplet. Again, all these studies showed progression-free survival. Overall survival is confounded by subsequent therapy. Now here, I want to cover what is more relevant for North American practice, those patients whose myeloma is resistant to both lenalidomide and portesmib. The first FDA approved is daratumumab pomalidomide dex based on this single arm trial where the progression-free survival was not achieved. 
the nine month progression free survival was 86%. A second option is carfilzomib dextaritumumab, which was very recently FDA approved a couple of weeks ago based on a randomized trial compared with kyprolis dexamethasone. You can see here the progression free survival was not reached with the triplet, was about 16 months with kyprolis dex, and that's illustrated here on the right with a very favorable hazard ratio. And a third regimen is elatuzumab pomalidomide dex in the LEN board refractory myeloma. This was FDA approved predicated upon this particular trial showing a progression free survival of about six months and a favorable hazard ratio. And the most recently approved uh, combination in this uh, setting is isotuximab CD38 antibody. And this antibody is like daratumumab in terms of its immune effects here on the right and has a direct killing mechanism uh, that's distinct from daratumumab. This uh, isotuximab was FDA approved with pomalidomide dex based on this particular randomized trial showing that isotuximab pomalidomide dex had a higher overall and extent of response and a progression-free survival advantage. Very recently, this antibody has been combined with kyprolis, so the new antibody with the second generation proteasome inhibitor DEX. And you can see here that the triplet again had a progression free survival advantage and a positive hazard ratio that was statistically significant. And in fact, there were fewer adverse events in the triplet arm than there were in the kyprolis DEX arm. And then for the triple class refractory, we now have two options. So these are individuals whose myeloma is resistant to bortezomib, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and daratumumab. The first is Selenexor, the oral uh, nuclear transport inhibitor. It was FDA approved, predicated upon this STORM trial. 20% responses, duration of response about 4.4 months, but there are side effects and very aggressive supportive care is needed to deal with the GI side effects. Very recently, this uh, Salinexor has been combined with Velcade Dex and compared to Velcade Dex in earlier relapse. And you can see that Salinexor combined with Veldex was superior in this setting. And on the right here in uh, older patients and frail patients and in those uh, with high risk disease. And finally, the most recent approval again in those patients who have the triple class refractory myeloma is the first immunotoxin. The BCMA antibody bound to R statin immunotoxin called Belantoman mafodotin. It has immune effects here on the right and it has immunotoxic effects on the left. This is the data upon which that approval was based. You can see at the two and a half milligram per kilogram dose, there's a duration of response of 11 months, a response rate of 31%. The most, complication, uh, the most common complication here is keratopathy, which can lead to visual changes. However, those are transient and rarely lead to discontinuation. That's shown on this slide. Here is the incidence of keratopathy here. And in fact, uh, this can be managed. And as I mentioned, very few patients discontinued therapy. And finally, venetoclax bortezomib dex here has been combined with, with, with bortezomib dex. Uh, this is particularly relevant for the patients who have the 1114 translocation myeloma or who have myeloma overexpressing BCL2 gene and protein. The Bellini trial showed on the left a marked progression-free sur survival advantage when venetoclax was combined with Velcade that is restricted to this population that overexpressed BCL2 and not evident in the other patients. So here is a summary of all of the trials I've presented to you, the phase three trials of three drugs versus two. You can see the hazard ratios are in favor of the triplet in all of these cases, whether Lendex was the control arm, Velcade Dex was the control arm, or as we moved further in advanced disease, pomalidomide Dex or even Kyprolis Dex were the control arms. In each case, triplet therapy is preferred. Now, I just wanna talk at the last part of my uh, presentation of the new drugs that are coming 
Malflufen is a prodrug, really, of malfilan. When you give malflufen at the myeloma cell, it is converted to melphalan because of high aminopeptidase levels. The idea is to get a higher therapeutic index inside the myeloma cell. The HORIZON trial showed a response rate of about 30%. Again, in triple class refractory disease, it was about 24%. The duration of response, seven and a half months. So this agent is actually coming along towards FDA approval. There are now stronger IMIDs. This is a cell mod CC92480 that was presented at ASCO in this phase one trial of increasing dose escalation. The response rate was about half of the patients at the one milligram dose, even in patients whose myeloma was refractory to pomalidomide. And then targeted therapies are being tested, shown on the left here are the frequency with which mutations are shown are seen in multiple myeloma in the relapse state. And on the right-hand side, the so-called my drug trial, where patients are receiving exazomib pomalidomide plus a targeted agent at the time of relapse predicated upon their particular profile and mutations. And finally, to finish up, BCMA-targeted immunotherapy is coming uh, very soon. I already mentioned to you that the immunotoxin has already been approved, the BCMA um, immunotoxin. But I'll mention here BCMA bispecific T-cell engagers and also BCMA-directed CAR T-cells. So here are the clinical trials that are ongoing. It may not be a complete list, but it's many of them. I mentioned that the belantamab mafodotin immunotoxin has been approved. There are several others in clinical trials. CAR T cells are shown here and the bispecific uh, T cell engagers on the right, and I'll show you some examples. Firstly, for the bispecific T cell engagers or so-called BITES, this is CC93269 that has two binding sites for BCMA and one to CD3. The idea is to give this off the shelf medication that's attracted to tumor by BCMA binding and attract the T cells to the immune response exactly where you would want it. So in this trial of dose escalation at six to 10 milligrams, the response rate was quite high approaching 90%, even in relapse refractory myeloma. These bites or bispecific T cell engagers do have cytokine release syndrome. We've recently committed, uh, completed a trial where we combined the Amgen bite preclinically with the IMIDs. I want to mention this because I think the future is combination immunotherapy. And what we showed here is even at low effector, therapy, effector target cell ratios, when you add lenalidomide, pomalidomide, you get marked killing of cell lines here on the left. And even in an autologous system where you have the patient's own T cells and own myeloma, so if you can use, for example, in this slide, imids and bites together, you can use lower doses of both and probably improve the therapeutic index. And what about CAR T cells? This is the J&J &J CAR T cell, the CAR to trial where there's two binding sites for BCMA on the myeloma cell of this T cell that's transfected, activated T cell receptor co-stimulatory molecule 41BB. And you can see here high overall extent of response. And when they look at the, uh, for MRD negativity in this particular trial, 100% of 17 evaluable patients were MRD negative. Now at ASCO, the CAR T cell data was updated. The uh, BB2121 or the KARMA trial the EVOLVE trial and the trial I just mentioned, the CARTITUDE trial. I'll just mention quickly in the interest of time, these are high-risk patients, heavily pre-treated, literally have no other therapeutic options. Here's the efficacy on the right. There are high response rates. As I mentioned, when MRD is assayed, it's present in most cases. The problem is the durability. The durability, um, the median progression-free survival is somewhere between eight and 11 months. So we still need to have more research in terms of improving the durability. The safety is improving here on the left-hand side. Cytokine release syndrome is now being recognized earlier and we can intervene targeting IL-6 biology. So it's becoming more tolerable and the therapeutic index is improving. 
here's an example of one way to try to modify CAR T cells. Most of those that I showed you on the previous slide are DNA-based CAR T cells. Here's a recent work in our laboratory of RNA-based CAR T cells, which actually are effective in this particular preclinical study for only about nine to 12 days. They kill myeloma cells, they kill patient uh, cells that are BCMA expressing. But the purpose here is maybe you could give an RNA-based CAR T cell repeatedly more and more cycles, just as we use conventional or targeted therapies in myeloma. So what I've tried to say, albeit quickly, is that we have many therapies for relapsed myeloma. They depend on the clinical features in the prior therapy. Triplets are the way to go because they increase the extent and frequency of response and progression-free survival. I mentioned just a couple of examples, malflufen, venetoclax, the cell mods, and the my drug targeted therapy as clinical examples of new treatments that are being evaluated. And in terms of the immune therapies, I mentioned BCMA-directed immunotoxins, bispecific T-cell engagers, and CAR T-cells. My thought for the future is that we're gonna have combination targeted and immune therapies. We're gonna define the populations by profiling and we're gonna use biomarkers to inform our treatment. So in the future, we're not gonna to need to do big phase two, three trials to show small improvements anymore. And my hope, sincerest hope is we'll have long-term disease-free survival and even potential cure if we get to MRD negativity and if we use some of the modalities I described towards the end to restore patients' own myeloma immune response against their own tumor. Ultimately, then patients will be free of disease and be off therapy. And here is my uh, research and laboratory group. Uh, it goes bench to bedside and back in order to bring many of these advances that I've described to our patients. Thanks ever so much.